Uh, very good day. Now, in the last couple of videos, we've done we've done a vertical, we've done a dipole. So today, what we're going to do is we're going to model a basic square loop, which will take about five minutes. In the next one, what we're going to do is we're going to turn it into a triangle, and we're going to make it two, three, four wavelengths bigger. See what happens. Quite interesting. So the loop antenna. Now. I've got one thing to tell you before we formally start is that in under setup language, a lot of people have discovered that when it downloads at the moment, it's in Deutsch, which is actually quite difficult to understand. So that's how you change it back. Right, I'm going to make this a wee bit bigger so you can see it nicely. Do we maximize it? Maybe, yeah, we'll do it like that. You remember the geometry tab, the view tab, the calculate tab and everything. We're going straight in today to the wire edit button. And I'll maximize this as well. I'll go to the X, Y, we'll draw a square loop on the ground, which is probably gonna be a wee bit too big. We're, we'll find out how big is that? 20 meters. Uh, we can shrink it in a minute. There we are, one square loop. Nice thing about this software is that you've got this little drawing tool because otherwise some of the professional end of the modeling market You've got to know, you've got to start working all this stuff out, okay? So we just view that and work out where we want to put our, I'm looking at the X over there. Let's put the feed point on this one here, which it says it, wire to. So right click, move add source to the center of the wire. Now this is quite a big antenna. So let's reduce it by a factor of two by hitting the calculate button or scale button. Uh, multiply by 0.5 which should exactly if the math has been right changed it all from tens to fives now let's make this for about the 40 meter band so if we're going to do that let's put 7.2 megahertz in i'm going to show you a new toy a new tool today this isn't going to be 20 meters high if you're considering putting a flat loop in the garden the backyard that is Chances are it's going to be fairly low. I mean, let's just put it at seven meters off the ground and we'll make it out of copper wire. Um, something's going wrong, seven add height. Uh, very often I'm in the, it says perfect, this is real world, okay? We could go into ground setup, not today. I'm going to show you the SWR calculator in, in a minute. We also know if it's a loop, it would be 200 ohms. So we're using a four to one impedance. So we go through these steps. We go optimize, advanced. We go to the environment tab and we just put in 200. That's all you do. And by the way, this won't change the far field plot. It'll just make your SWR look a bit better on the chart. It will not change the far field plot. Right, I'm just gonna hit start now and see what happens. Okay, my SWR, it says here, is 4.77. So if you were considering making this a wee bit better, at seven meters height, what we can do is hit the, now we're gonna go into the SWR, get the best SWR out of it. So let's find exactly where is its best SWR. So SWR, uh, sorry. Let's give, give me a uh, 400, so just under 400 kilohertz, just under half a megahertz. And give me a detailed plot, please, between 7.0 and 7.4. You can click that button, detailed. Oh, and you can see it's actually gone off the scale. It's too big. So we can actually make that bigger. Or we could just click resonance. Oh, to hell with all that. Where's it resonant? Okay, best resonance I've got is 7.689. So in other words, it's a wee bit too small. So let's just take a note of that, 7689, 7689. So we need to go here, Seven, 7 7.689, and that's now where it believes this antenna should be. So when I hit this button, the scale button, it'll go, oh, well, you're at 7689. I know about speed of light and wavelengths and everything. Where's your target frequency? 7.2, that's a multiplier of 1.0. Six, seven, nine, something. And now you'll see all these numbers change a wee bit. Right, so now we can go back down to 7.2 and we will have an antenna under two to one. There we are, 1.99. It might not be exactly right because 
relative to the Earth, the wavelength has changed, a few other things, whatever. Where are you resonant now? That'll do. Whatever. I'm not worried about, it says here, it's got 100 ohms of beatings. Uh, and a few other things. My SWR, I would expect that to be slightly higher. But uh, if, let, just please don't worry about the SWR right now. It doesn't actually matter. And I can prove it to you. Because if we went up a touch higher, all the numbers would start to work. All right? It's just that we're proportionally very low to the ground for the maths. 10 metres, 30 feet. I've got an SWR 1.3 to 1 because the impedance has gone up to 154. So that's why I say do not worry about this. Well, we'll leave it at 10 metres. That's fine. I can live with 1.3 to 1 and so can you. So however long that is, I think probably about six minutes. But anyway, I've done that roughly in five. So that's how you would draw a loop. Right, we can go to the far field plot and just have a couple of look at the looks at things. You've got the currents on and off. I'm currently driving on the right hand side, 10 metres off the ground. Where is most of our RF going? Well, it's quite interesting. A lot of it's going, oh, there's X and Y. Uh, there we are. So X is over here and Y is up here. If we do elevation, just uh, daytime, 40 meters, say 30 degrees. Over here, we've got 1.9 bananas. Up there, we've got minus 2.8, just over 3 dB difference. And behind us, so coax, if you like, going forward, 1.9, 2.3, worst case scenario. So there's nearly 6 dB between one side and the back of the antenna. I said the back because that's where the feed point is. And roughly that's where it is. You can look at that as a far field plot just to see what it can do. I'm sure it should be working in a minute. Oh, I've got the new version. Oh gosh, five degrees. I haven't seen this one before. It's all in color. How do we change this to English? I don't know. Oh, there it is. Set up English. Hey, hey. done it. Ah. There we are. So that's how to model a loop. Next time what we'll do is a much bigger plot. We'll go to multiple wavelengths, make it triangular because some really cool things happen there as well. In the meantime, next video is coming up here. Have a jolly good day. Thanks very much for, for joining me today. Bye for now.